Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of I Just Said Why I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV. Last episode we did, or we began working on our animal weapon. And today we're going to go and continue. Quite simple, really. Hmm. Save your breath, lass. He's been sitting there brooding ever since you left. Surely, I said. Surely, if we just leave her be, swinging the weapon about as she pleases, the animal will grow on its own. Of course, it's no satisfying him. I don't know what's stirring in that loaf of his, but I wish he'd pay a mind to stir in elsewhere. But I could use a distraction. Else, I could use a nice books on distraction myself. For the last time, please do not speak of such things. Not everyone shares your deplorable, your deplorable appetites. <sighs> but what you say of the animal weapon is true. In a hyper conductor state, it's only a matter of time before the animal grow uh, shows so new signs of growth. Yet what sort of research would I be if I did not search for a way to hasten the process? Oh, he's so serious. The little lords found a way to bugger us some more, eh? And did I have, though, it would require a trip to Ilshire. My quest to find Charlie and researchers, they are born no fruit. But I did meet with a young lady whose field of expertise is quite similar to mine own. Her name is Ulan. She has a vast knowledge of arcane entities and specializes in the study of carbuncles. In fact, her research concer uh, concerns the enhancement of these, little, uh, of these entities with crystals. While not quite as freeze-thinking as Lin's anima, they are of a similar nature. Perhaps enough for her to wor uh, wor for her work to be of use. When last we spoke, she sought an, apprentice, uh, an apprenticeship uh, from the self-same Charlian researcher who refused, uh, refused me an audience. No doubt they have left her waiting in Ilshire even now. Come then. Let us be off before she finds reasons to conduct her research elsewhere. Right. This one is also quite a doozy. Well, it's a doozy if you don't already have the honest repair. Yeah. What are we here? An admirer of the arcane, a connoisseur of carbuncles. I have not for sale, mind you, but I would be more than willing to tell you about. Ardashir, pray forgive me, madam. Had I known you were an acquaintance of his, <clears throat> allow me to start anew. Lynn, was it? I am Ulan, researcher of all matters arcane. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. My luminous companionship here is Diamond. How, now, exactly how did you come to know, my dear Ardashir? Ah, it would appear I have come late. My apologies. I see you and Lynn have already met. She has been of invaluable assistance in my research on anima. I see. Before you left Idleshire, you spoke of your pre preliminary proposal for the Shardians. I would very much like to hear how your work has progressed thus far. You wish to borrow my techniques for crystal absorption and apply them to your anima? An intriguing idea. Though there still remains one rather large obstacle. Arcan entities like diamond here are compromised almost entirely of ether, which is why I believe that the ethereal energy of crystals can be harnessed to further their growth. This is the basis of my research. This can only be accomplished, however, using crystals with a combination of different material uh, elemental aspects. All arcane beings are unique, and thus require a balance of crystals toiled, uh, tailored sorry, to their composition. Even the slightest error can disrupt their ethereal equilibrium, possibly destroying them in the process. It is rather delicate work. To undertake such a project on your own could take weeks, even months without intimate knowledge of my research. Unless, perhaps, we can help one another. 
Being a researcher yourself, I have no doubt you understand my work it requires a great deal of documentation, supplies, and more importantly, test subjects. I might be persuaded to select your anima as a test subject should you be should you and your companion choose to assist me, or I, uh, or if you would rather spend weeks poring over my notes. Yes. <laughs> Correct, madam. N no, 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 no. I think that is more than fair. Then we are agreed. You will supply me with literature to supplement my research, and your assistant here will bring me the supplies. Here is the list of what I require. It seems we have our work cut out for us, friend. I shall return as quickly as I am able. <sighs> Was time to get with me truly such an unpleasant proposition? Now, where were we? Ah, yes, supplies for my work. I will not burden you with all that I have listed here. I listed there. Even one of those items would be a boon. In exchange, I will offer you crystal sand, a reagent of my own creation that should help facilitate the absorption of crystal energies. The process will no doubt require a great deal of sand, but I will happily give you all that you require. Be warned, however, you cannot have hazardly apply the sand as you please. Hmm. A brief demonstration would sooner explain my points. Would you be so kind as to call forth this atom of yours? Come. My, what a splendid thing you are. Oh. <laughs> She's surprised that I can see it. Come now then, I have devoted my life to the study of arcane creatures of all sorts. As Ardashir explained, the two of uh, the two of you have gone to great lengths to come this far. That I should be unable to see it would be far more surprising. Now come closer, little one, I have a gift for you. And this woman means us harm. My body, it, it fades. You must flee. My apologies, I did not mean to frighten it. Though I must say, your anima is more perceptive than I have supposed. As I said before, every arcane creature is unique and requires a certain balance of elements. To absorb crystal sand, this sand, however, is at odds with its composition. Rather than waste time probing your uh, anima to ascertain a proper balance of elements, I propose we treat the crystal sand with umbrite, stripping it of its elemental properties. This is by far the safest and quickest way to prepare the sand for consumption. As luck would have it, I found a merchant right here in Ilshire who sells it. Ismena, Ismena, I believe is her name. A single stone and pouch of crystal sand is all we need to begin. Ah, before I forget, you will need to have the animus vessel close at hand when offering up the crystal sand. You mustn't forget it. I suppose this will also be of use. For your purposes, let us call it an anima glass. It allows me to more closely observe the ethereal balance of my dear diamond. It should allow you to do the same for your anima. That should do for the explanations. If you should have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask. When you have all we require, return to me and we shall make the anima grow as never before. One requesting Yulon's, or Yulon's <gasps> assistance in developing the anima. We must first speak with her while, equipping, uh, while equipped with your hyperconductive anima weapon, then select to foster the anima's growth. She will then take the crystal sand and umbrite to create treated crystal sand. This process can be repeated so long as you have the requisite items in your inventory. Treated crystal sand can be used to raise uh, to raise the five attributes associated with your anima as you see fit. Five attributes associated with your anima are critical hit, direct hit, determination, piety, and spell speed. You can review the items to be exchanged for crystal sand at any time by accessing Yulon's notes in your inventory. Moreover, you can view the progress of your anima at any time by accessing the anima glass in your inventory. Okay, so... The things that I need are Umbrite. You can get Umbrite. Is the only way you can get Umbrite? Uh, let's see. Umbrite can apparently only be purchased for 75 uh, elegant tombstone of products each. You will usually need about 57 to 60 um, pieces of Umbrite and also of crystal sand. Um, resulting in that you would have to spend either 4,275 or 4,500 tombstones to get this amount of umbrites. Okay. Um, is this a zodiac glass? Yeah. <laughs> and now when it comes to the crystal sand. 
I said I could do actually help you with that. Oh. Here. But I need to trade crystal sand. Yes. So I want to. Uh, I'm not sure if this has been fixed already, but I have once had a bug where the game did not put two over here next to the crystal sand. It had zero next to it. So I traded a lot of items and I got no crystal sand for it. It was a weird bug, but anyway. The way that you can trade these is you can use Blue Crafter scripts or Blue Gra Gatherer scripts. These are this is the way that I originally did it, where you just make collectibles or gather collectibles, whichever you you want, um, and you trade them in to get scripts. So it's like 125 scripts per uh, per five gatherer uh, script tokens. Which would then give you two crystal sand. So, like, I think you can work it out. <laughs> you, in any case, need a sizable amount of scripts, but it's not too difficult to grind that. It's just a little bit of a pain. You can also use a garland steel, Celestine, like all of this stuff, but that requires a lot more work. The amber encased Vilekin, which I have, I will explain in a moment. Uh, fire material for just any type of material of that type. But fire, ice, and wind material, these don't even exist anymore, I just noticed. Demi materia, which seems like a mistake. Moonstone, which also seems like a mistake. Primal pieces, also a mistake. Um, you can use these: superior enchanted ink and Thevenarian mist. Um, for like with 225 elegant tombstones each. So I've only just noticed this over here. So you can either spend 6,750 elegant tombstones of poetics to get all you need via the tombstone path. Or you need to have 3,750 scripts of any kind. There's also this, which doesn't exist anymore, and this. <laughs> and then also these, if you for some kind of reason want to do that. Anyway, the Amber in case of Vilekin, you can get these from doing levies in the Heavensward regions and getting any treasure chest that appears in, in those. Now, yeah. I, uh... <laughs> I am doing a lot of these for... Uh, actually, I can show this. I'm doing a lot of these because I want to get Lady Protector, which requires me to do 500 regional battlecraft levies. Um, I'm 15 away, uh, but you know, also, I yeah, I only have 7 allowances, so I can't even finish it. But I want this to be the title that Lin's going to carry for probably the entirety of the game. Um, so that is how I came by all of this. <laughs> Otherwise, I would highly, highly suggest just doing um, doing it with the crafter and gatherer stuff. If you do not have them unlocked, then it's the elegant tombstone way, which will take some time. Anyway, let us foster the growth. So you can treat sand, which will just create stats that you can then allocate into whatever you want. Um, now, I think I'm just going to go for, like, direct and crit rate. I don't really know what the best stuff is for... Um, for... Oh my god, my mind. I am i don't know what the best stuff is for Astrologian, because I don't main that job. And usually, if I don't main it, or, like, semi-main it, then I don't really care too much about mid-maxing the, um, the materia at later points in the games or the stats. And I just keep doing this. Do not like, like, do not treat all of your sand in one go. Um, especially if you're like trying, if you're going for more weapons, more than one weapon, I would definitely suggest um, filling up basically your anima halfway and then leaving. It seems the anima has grown quite strong. Would you not agree, Arnott? That crystal sand can uh, that crystal sand no longer uh, no longer aligned to any elements. Wait, that crystal sand, <laughs> Jesus, no longer aligned to any one element could be so effective as unprecedented. The data we have collected should prove quite useful in your research. I, I wish to continue. For your sake and mine, that you should never want for strength in times of strife, I will become stronger.
An ambitious one, your anima. That it should strive so fiercely to exceed its own limitations is quite remarkable. Not even Diamond Carbuncle demonstrated such tenacity. The bond between you two is one to be envied for sure. Or for certain. Words are difficult. You're good, dude. The documents you requested, as promised. Ah, Ardashir. Ardashir, your timing is impeccable. The crystal sand was as effective as we expected. However, it would seem your serial companion wishes to pursue greater strength, despite reaching what I have calculated to be the apex of its power. Doubt as you are aware of the potential repercussions should we grant this request. So, what say you? Shall we cast caution to the wind and see to, uh, see to what new heights the anima can attain? But of course, if it is the animus which who are we to deny it? Though should we succeed, there is still the matter of its vessel, the weapon. I fear it will not bear the strain of any new powers the animal will possess. <laughs> I will consult with our smith to forge a new vessel, one better suited to the animus burgeoning strength. It would seem my stay here in Ilsa would be much more uh, interesting than I anticipated. When you are ready to begin anew, you need but say the word. Alright. I am ready. So from this point onwards, you can get bonus points whenever you're treating sand. Um, as a result, this is why I recommended not making the sand like any more than you needed for that first part. Uh, we're just gonna need another 90 pieces of sand, so I may as well make it. This is also the thing that determines how much crystal sand and how much umbrite you would need. There we go. Um, and then we're gonna go for crit red. Direct hit and crit. I can never go wrong with that. <laughs> In any case, that's with Warrior and with uh, Reaper, which are the two jobs that I actually put material in. <laughs> I care about at least a little bit. It's probably not perfect, but mm, eh, whatever. I'm not a not a high level raider. I'm just a medium raider. My body it aches. It is as Ardashir predicted. Its vessel can no longer bear the power that now courses through it. We must hurry back to him with the anima. I will see to it that he is apprised of the situation by the time you arrive. Should he have need to examine the anima more closely, give him the anima glass. Alright. Right, let's go and do this. Then, thank goodness, we must act quickly. There's no telling how much longer the soul stone will last. I would have the animal glass and the weapon serving as its vessel. As I feared, the animal's vessel has reached its limit. We must remove the soul stone at once. So stone appears to be still intact. Ready the new weapon, Gerald. The soul stone must be set before it begins to degrade. The animal's got a lot of spine up there for being one so small. I'll grant you that. This new weapon ought to make a make for a fine reward.
It's done, lass. Hold her up and see how she feels. Pinnacle of craftsmanship, courtesy of yours truly, and the notes were taught me a lesson, uh, were taught me the ins and outs of elegant technology. Sphere of the last air. My body feels so light. What manner of arcane magic cost this? A new vessel designed by Ardashir and forged by Gerald. Thank you, both of you. Can it be after years of research of trials and failures? I can see the anima. I can see the anima. And I can hear it speak. Oh, if only my master could be here to witness this. Lynn, Ardashir does not seem well. Perhaps he too requires a new vessel. Yes, something more powerful like your new weapon. Might you ask Gerald to build one? <laughs> it appears you have developed a sense of humor to match your new body. Unfortunately, my ethereal friend, we cannot exchange ours quite so easily. Though the weapon that houses your soul stone is indeed exquisite. I very much doubt Gerald would grant me anything quite so elegant. Ah, but look at me standing here talking to you. Never have I felt such joy. Joy? You must be tired after such a long day. Rest. You have earned it. This marks a monumental breakthrough in our work. Though it still appears to want for knowledge, our goal is all but realized. And I can think of none better, to, uh, better suited to teaching our young charge of the world and its wonders. Oh, you see, it, you see to it, your anima doesn't turn into a sniveling old shite like this lordship here. Or there's plenty. I imagine arrogant, pig-headed cloth would be equally undesirable. Uh -huh. As I said before, it has been a terribly long day, not only for the anima, but for you as well. Rest easy, Lin. I will do all in my power to determine our next course of action by the time you return. I've gone and done it now, lass. I know he's trying to keep his composure, but as soon as you'll leave the boil, uh, if as soon as you'll leave the boil, branding. Uh, but as soon as you leave, the boy will be prancing about the singing about the anima. We're not counting them being ready to work any again anytime soon. At least we've got nothing to worry about for as long as the anima is with, it, with you. Take good care of that weapon here. I mean, I will be here literally uh, now. <laughs> the anima has reached beyond its limits. The weapon housing its also and is forged anew. Right, need to equip this thing. Now that the anima can maintain a form seen, uh, uh, seen even by those without your abilities, it is fair to say my research is all but complete, my last task being to define any abilities it has gained thus far. Once that is finished, I shall return to Ratsatan and make ready to present my findings. I dare say our work here shall forever change the study of arcane summonings as we know it. What else are you on about, boy? Now I understand being excited what with us finally seeing the anima and all, but I think you're losing sight of what our work is all about. Preposterous, the goal of my work was to create a sentient being capable of independent thought, which could then serve to help others. Alright, right, and you really think you've accomplished that? Bollocks. Ain't no way something that's grown that much that fast can be in any kind of stable condition. We've poked and prodded the damn thing more than uh, more times than, I de than I'd care to count. And by the grace of Roger, we've somehow managed not to mess it up. But tell me this, what happens when we're not around when a new weapon needs smithing, eh? I'll tell you what, it'll grow too big for its ethereal britches and kneel over. What the anima needs now is a body that'll handle it no matter how strong it gets. Until we can figure that, your work amounts to not but piss in a kettle, if you ask me. Oh, but what I do, what, what, oh, but what do I know? I'm just a, I'm just a know-nothing saw with a hammer. Know that a refined scholarly lad such as yourself has already considered such complications. The only thing more insufferable than a drunkard is when he is right. So blinded by its radiance, I did not stop to consider the future. Putting my own desires before the needs of the anima. 
Right then, there'll be plenty of time for a moment after we f we're fin we finished. And I'm free from that witch or winner, for now. We need to think, uh, we need to think about a way to give the animal a new permanent home. The weapon holding it now should be fine for the time being. You just keep an eye on the animal while we figure out the rest. Actually, I may already have a solution, albeit an interim one, thanks in part to Yulan uh, and our studies. We were working on a potion of sorts to fortify the animal weapon, that it might abide further growth. The difficulty proved in our need for ceruleum. It would need to be distilled to serve our purposes, and we simply had not the means to do so. As fortune would have it, though, we caught word of a renowned distiller recently come to Idleshire and immediately sought him out. After making our case, he was all too happy to assist. Plampress is his name. Would you pay him a visit and see how things are coming along? There are other preparations to be made, of course, but Gerald and I will see to them. Everything should be in order upon your return. Okay. Lambrus, eh? That gives me an idea. Right. Back to Edel, Shire. So, welcome, friends. What can I do for you? An order from whom? Oh, yes, that scholarly fellow, Arashir, was it? A work on his order is well underway. Working with ceruleum is no easy task, though. Distilling a substance so volatile demands a substantial concentration of ether. The only source potent enough being Sinjin clusters. Quite a rarity, you know. And for an order like this, why, it would require 50 at the very least. Procuring such oddities is beyond my abilities, but I have enlisted the aid of two fine young mages to see the job done, if only the price of their services was not so steep. There you are, we've brought what you asked for. I trust you're prepared to hold up your end of the deal. My, what for fortuitous timing. This young lady here was just telling me how she would love nothing more than to offer you her services in my stead. Huh? Um, uh, these are these are the two uh, lovely ladies I was telling you about, remember? The ones collecting the Sinjin clusters you require. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Aphelis, and this is my sister, Angelette. I will keep matters brief. Blampers agreed to undertake certain tasks in exchange for, your, uh, for our help. If you would serve in his place, we will compensate you with the clusters you seek. Agreed. Splendid. Now that that's settled, I'll leave you to it. When you have what we need, come back and I shall see about distilling that elixir. Ah, that reminds me. A merchant that when it's employed deals in singeing clusters. I believe it was his mena. Their names all sound alike. At any rate, if you find their task to be too much trouble, you can always try striking a deal with her. Right, singeing clusters obtainable. A repeatable quest is now available from both Amphilis and Angelette. Uh, or Angela, whatever. By completing either of these repeatable quests, you will obtain Sinjin Clusters, which can then be offered to Blamperst. Sinjin Clusters may also be purchased from his mana at Ruenes Center for Cultural Promotion. So. You can either spend 2,000 Elegant Tombstones for 50 Sinjin Clusters, or you can get one from a daily quest, which requires you to run uh, level 50, 60, Judy Willet. Uh, it's kind of insane, only one. Oh, I see, okay. And there's also uh, a quest, a weekly quest, which requires you to run uh, leveling Willet three times. And then you get 18. Or you can just get 2,000 turnstones and buy them. Judging by that smile, I take it you have the clusters I require. There you go. Yes, yes, this will do nicely. Wait here just, mo just a moment. There we are. One order of the stilts or William. Before you go, though, I must ask, if you work with Arashir, you must also know Gerald, correct? He placed an order for a bottle of my finest ale. Now that we're finished with our Arashir's commission, I'd like to take care of his, if that's all right with you. 
Huh, you needn't worry about compensation, friend. He paid in advance. I only ask that you take his package with you. It's been so long since he's come to see me, I was beginning to worry the moneylenders had finally done uh, done for him. Or worse. He'd taken a life of, 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 of sobriety. <laughs> or sobriety. In any event, I'm glad he seems back to his old self. Take care and give them my regards. And then the one after this is gonna be hell. It's gonna be hell. Well, depending. It depends on a couple of things. Either I will get incredibly lucky or it will be hell. Welcome back then. We have accomplished much while you were away. In fact, I'm quite close to a more permanent solution to our troubles. But first, let us do what we can to fortify the Animus current vessel. Might I have a look at the weapon in question? Oh, and the distilled sodium, of course. Yoink. Ball of cerulean, carefully distilled to remove all impurities. And Moonrise, distilled by Blamperst using a recipe of his own creation. Some claim the full extent of its in inebriating effects can only be over can only be enjoyed in the light of the moon. Right then, uh, right then, now, to prepare the potion. Then, why exactly did Bram press to prepare two bottles? Are they to be mixed together? Gerald ordered a bottle of ale. If he had the money to spend, he would be carousing in some, 50, in some filthy tavern. Not here working off his debts. The only way he could afford that would be... Our funding? You selfish beef-witted meltworm. You squandered our funds from Rowena and from spirits? I did, I did. Consider it payment. Out, uh, out for reminding you about being selfish yourself. All that blithering about being dumb at the anima. Don't give me that look. You know, I can't do my best work without m my muse. Now hurry up with that potion. This weapon ain't gonna hammer itself. You truly are insufferable. When this is over, you shall learn there are consequences for misspending other money. Rowena's money. Uh, calm yourself, Artashir. There's work to be done. There, the potion is done. All that remains is to apply uh, is applying it to the animal weapon. I leave the rest to you. A fine piece of work, if I do say so myself. A weapon made sharp with a brew of pure ceruleum. Hmm, I like the sound of that. Sharpened sphere of the last air. I feel a new strength shining shines brightly within me. Could this mean perhaps I am reaching my full potential? You're almost there. You really think so? Then I must do all I can not to disappoint you. It's good to see our work was a success, and the anima seems stronger than before, yet its vessel remains silent. Ah yes, speaking of the vessel, I must tell you of our soon-to-be permanent solution to handling the anima's growth. We will forge not just a weapon, but a new soul stone to house its essence. In my quest to find a means to do so, I happened upon something quite interesting. Wait here a moment. Initializing since this protocols, please insert materials. What do you think? This elegant droid was no doubt used for uh, used for work requiring precision beyond what any man is capable of. Used being the operative word, try as I might whenever I initiate its production sequence. A 
bit, bit, bit internal error enabled the process. The system crashes. It will take time, but mark my words, I shall repair this elegant device. Once repaired, I am confident I can fashion a new soul stone for the anima to last a thousand lifetimes. And to my surprise, Gerald has already taken the initiative to start work on a new weapon, one befitting the new heights to which our ethereal companion might climb. Rest assured, we will contact you when preparations are complete. Until next time, friend. Camprito! Right, your animal weapon has been sharpened, serving to harness the burgeoning strength within. Of course I have to have it equipped. Right. Lin, you come at the most opportune time, my friend. Repairs on the processing node are nearly complete. A pity, though, that much that such repairs are beyond my field of expertise. I have had no choice but to call on Gerald's for assistance. Hm. Was the last time them dating little hands of yours touched the uh, touched the hammer? How about giving credit where it's due for a change, eh? Or better yet, do some bloody work yourself. What we do here calls for more than uh, more than mere brawn. Truth, uh, though, it, though, if truth be told. I have not the time to study the literature pertinent to such repairs. Very well, if there is work to be done, I shall see to it personally. It will not be said that Ardashiel Balik stood idly by while some toper fulfilled duties in his stead. You don't half have a mouth on you, do you? Alright then. How about fetching me the materials for that new weapon you asked for? And take Lynn with you. Not that I don't trust your mind, it's just too much work for one. If you would insist you accompany me, then so be it. Uh -huh. Right then, then there's work to be done. I will have you handle the more, shall we say, exotic items he has requested: a rare gemstone from Andapur, a magic to doll from the Great Global, Global Library, and molten rock from some all. Strange to think such a haphazard collection of items can be forged into a weapon. Then again, I once doubted the favorable uh, effects of alcohol on his smithing. At any rate, I shall see uh, see to the remaining three oddities on this list. Hopefully, I will not keep you waiting too long. I only just realized. I totally forgot that I have to do quests. I oh, sorry that I have to do dungeons for this too. City of Amdapur Hard. Uh. Yeah. Google Library Hard. Oh, for the love of. But I can do this with any freaking job. So okay, all right. I will. I'll be right back. I guess. Well, that took a while. There you go, did you bring what I asked for? Magic bobble, a rare gemstone plucked from a crystal crystallum uh, in the heart of the lost city of Abdapol. A curious Charlian puppet found in a rare tomes room in the Great Kubu Library. And molten rock from the belly of some all, said to be possessed of preternatural power. Yeesh. Oh yeah, uh, a little uh, piece of advice for this. Um, you need to run this uh, with the job that uh, you are making the weapon for. So, you know, I'm making the Astrologian weapon, which means that I need to beat them as Astrologian. Even though the game says, like, oh yeah, like in the, in the text it says, either with your weapon equipped or in your inventory, bollocks. It is, you have to be the job that you are doing the quest for. Otherwise, you do not get it. Go a glass and none the worse for the wear. <laughs> Which is more than I can say for his highness here. Hm. If you have time to waste on insults, then I take it uh, we may assume uh, work on the processing note is finished. Repairs like that I can do with my eyes closed. Finished them ages ago. Just been waiting for you two to show up. Excellent, at last we can commence our work on a new soul stone. I trust I can count on you for assistance once more. <laughs> Looks like I'll be busy with your toys for a bit. In that case, reckon I'll go put back a few. Child, I will not begrudge you a drink or two, as is your won't. Just promise me that the work will be done. With all the materials at hand, you could perform such a trifling task with your eyes closed, no? Oh, cheeky little. Fine, but you'd best hurry along with the souls down here. Now then, let me explain our next course of action. 
First and foremost, I will need your help in creating the new soul stone. It is a rather involved process, but with your help, I have no doubt everything will proceed swimmingly. Once finished, we will also need to ensure the anima is duly prepared for the transfer. Though not a complex procedure, it is without question the most vital. My most recent discovery and etheric verification device should prove quite useful here. But further explanations regarding that can wait until later. When you are ready to begin work on the soul stone, pre-activate the processing node. Nod. Right. Pip pip. Initializing. Please set directed parameters. Or desired. I, whatever. Well, well, it works. Give me a moment while I'm ready to know it. There, all we require now are materials for the Soulstone's creation. And for that, I turn to your unrivaled talent for procurement. Now, now, if we are to preserve the anima, we cannot falter now. Yeah. After all, there is yet another crucial step to be taken before the Soulstone is complete. For that, we will require the verification node. Let us not get ahead of ourselves, there is still much to do. We need not concern yourself with this device until we are finished with the processing node. We can now accept the quest Some Assembly Required from the Processing Node. To continue progression in the quest Born Again Anima, you must complete the quest Some Assembly Acquired to obtain a new soul stone. That's... Um, I may as well do this. Beep beep, verifying system parameters. System parameters verified. Please insert materials. Ready to begin work on a soulstone? Excellent. Let us begin by going over the requisite materials. Now it bears mentioning that mine is a new method of soulstone creation. Rather than making an existing stone and enchanting it, we will fashion a composite of high purity crystals. These crystals are common enough, and even I should be able to procure them. The catalyst for this process, however, will prove more elusive. A peculiar fusion of crystals and dark matter known as numite. As numite, sorry. It is essential to this unique form of soulstone synthesis. Unfortunately, I know not how or where one might obtain it. I have only seen a single specimen in my master's labor laboratory, and though it pains me to admit it, I never thought to inquire after its origins. I am afraid I must turn to your adventurous resourcefulness to acquire the numite we need. By my calculations, we will need no less than 15 to ensure a successful fusion. It is no easy task, but it is the only way to make our soul stone. Fist bomb. I knew I could count on you. When you have the requisite numite, return here and load them into the processing node. Good luck, then. Okay, new item requested by others here can be obtained through various means. Speak with other players and share information to discover how to fight. So, you can either spend 1,500 tombstones for 15, or you can spend uh, 60,000 company seals to uh, to get the amount that you need. You can choose. I, of course, have these already prepared. Let's... I feel like I'm on a cooking show. <laughs> you see, I already have my ingredients prepared. <laughs> Catalyst detected, analyzing, analyzing. Catalyst drive at full capacity, mineral quality optimal. Ah, you have the Numite, excellent work. I will ready the crystals at once. Oh, is there more? Yes. Crystals are all accounted for. Now, to load them into the processing node. That should do it. Now, processing node. Initiate the Soulstone Synthesis Protocol. Unable to initiate protocol, version 10 of the operating system is required to proceed. Do you wish to upgrade? Uh, upgrade? I'm not sure I want to. Upgrade requests that be agreed to the terms and conditions of use as, as stipulated by the Alicant Research Council. But I... Ugh, yes, yes, I agree. Will you please just initiate the synthesis protocol? Update complete. Rebooting system. Initiating synthesis protocol. Thing rebooted really quickly. And updated it too. 
Since it's complete, margin of error within acceptable parameters. It worked, it worked! Pray keep that soulstone safe, my friend. We shall have need of it when you are ready to work with another anima. Completo. Okay, now those are the easy steps. Time for the really painful one. Well, depending. Please insert, uh, please present specimen for analysis. So then, what do you think? As fortune would have it, I happened upon this note when searching for salvageable materials to repair the processing node. It has the ability to analyze the ethereal composition of any object placed before it, a function crucial to our work. In order to transfer the animus essence to the new soulstone, soul we must need sever the link to its present vessel. But this is not without incredible risk, for you see, in an instant it becomes unbound. There's a danger that it will dissipate into the ether. Its life would be extinguished in the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye. After much research into the manipulation of ether, I learned of the means to preserve the anima long enough to complete the process. Etheric condensation. The anima is, after all, a creature composed entirely of condensed ether. If it were to be condensed further, it should prove robust enough to survive this, the transfer. Thanks to the anima's weapon, uh, the anima weapon's treatment of ceruleum, I dare say its ability to absorb naturally occurring ether, thereby increasing the anima's density, is heightened. It is only a matter of, research, uh, of reaching levels needed for our purposes. To that end, I would ask that you resume your feats of daring do and monitor the anima with this device. It should indicate when the anima has reached sufficient, uh, sufficient density levels based on my estimates. When the anima is ready, return here and place its vessel uh, in the verification node. I programmed it to run a simulation of the transfer process based on the anima's density. When the verification node has confirmed that the chance of failure is all but eliminated, we can proceed to the next phase of our plan. So, do you remember the uh, so c completing certain activities while equipping while equipped with your animal weapon will increase its aesthetic density? Please be advised that aesthetic density cannot be increased when its durability is zero. By using the animal glass, it is possible to visualize uh, visually verify your progress. So, do you guys remember the uh, the the uh, like everybody's favorite little um, everybody's favorite little mechanic? Or idea that they brought forth with the uh, the Aram Reborn Relic Weapons. It's the Light Grind. So we now have the Enhanced Anima Glass. And basically the more duties that you do, the more that these runes are going to fill up basically. They're going to start shining brighter and then filling up until all of them are done. And then your fairy is good to go. Or like your weapon is good to go. Now. Uh, let me actually take a moment for... Take a moment for a moment, yes. <laughs> so. You need to get a total of 2,000 points. Ugh, I hate this. Um, <laughs> it's giving me pain while looking at it. Anyway, you can get uh, 4 points from doing Heaven's Word Face. 8 points from doing any of the... Um, like any of, oh, sorry, if, by doing the Limitless Blue or Stock as Stock, uh, normal, like, yeah, just a hard and uh, extreme. You can get 16 points by doing um, the extreme of, like, a Sephiroth extreme, the Minstrel's Ballad, Nidhogg, so Nidhogg extreme, um, and the Alexander Raids, 1 through 12. You can get 32 by doing Heaven's Word Dungeons, ARR level 50 Dungeons, excluding Castle Meridianum and Praetorium, and Alexander Raid Savage 1 through 4, and Containment Bay, like Zervan Extreme. You can get 64 from Heaven's Word Alliance Raids. You can get 96 from Alexander Savage, uh, the 9th and the 12th tier. And Stalwarts, which is a possible bonus you can get from, uh, from Set Savages. So the thing that people tend to do is if i go and click this off the thing that people tend to do is set up a party finder grab a group of people that are at this point you have you know level 90 level 90 and level 80 like you it's gonna be fine really if you, have, if you have a full party of level 90 or 80 people um you can normally beat the living shit out of um which one is this it's number nine in uh, Alexander, it is, I think, the Eyes of the Creator. Yeah. 
So by doing this Savage, this Savage is really like not too bad to do. Just with a full party of higher level people. Or you don't even have to have a full party, you just have to have enough people to be able to, in any case, beat it. Either way, once you have gathered your people, you can then go and run it unsynced 20 times. And then you will have what you need. And I think you can hazard a guess as to what's going to happen now. I'm going to... You know what? It is 15 minutes, so I feel like this is a good end to the episode. Because there's still quite some 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 dialogue left. So I think I'm going to end up over here. I hope you enjoyed this episode of this. I was playing Final Fantasy XIV. And off camera, I will be working to uh, fill in this light. And then by the next episode, we will be done with this. We can continue with the animal weapons and maybe also do Nidhogg Extreme. That was the other idea I had. Anyway, goodbye.